Okay, this is the final lecture uh, on how to read a book that I will give. It's chapter 11, Agreeing or Disagreeing with an Author. You do not need to read chapter 12 or the rest of the book. You can if you would like to. I will talk about four ways to criticize a book, and then we'll get into the details of those four ways by judging the author's, talking about judging the author's soundness, judging the author's completeness. And then we'll finally summarize the third and final stage of analytical reading. So after you have said, I understand, but I disagree, you can make the following remarks to the author. One, you are uninformed. Two, you are misinformed. Three, you are illogical. Four, your analysis is incomplete. These, um, in the minds of uh, many, in many in our culture, uh, will seem very harsh. Um, but they're only harsh uh, if they're said in an attitude of, um, uh, of contentiousness or um, putting down of another. Um, here, that is not the goal. The goal, to is, the goal is to critically assess a claim or an argument, not to attack a person. So soundness. What is soundness when we're judging the author's soundness? If the author's argument is not sound, well, that means either he makes false claims in his main argument, or his argument commits a fallacy. So, number one is you are uninformed. This is the, the author is making a false claim. To say that an author is uninformed is to say that he lacks some piece of knowledge that is relevant to the problem he is trying to solve. Remember, in books, authors are... Um, finding a solution to a problem. Uh, if you're saying that the author is uninformed, you're saying that there's some key piece of knowledge um, for th that is relevant to solving this problem and you haven't dealt with it. So you must be able to state, uh, you can't just say that an author is uninformed, you must be able to state the very specific knowledge that the author lacks and you need to show how it is relevant to his conclusions. If you can't do that, then you need to keep quiet. You need to not say that the author is uninformed because it seems like you don't understand the uh, author or the way in which the author is uninformed. So here's an example. Darwin, Charles Darwin, um, lacked uh, the knowledge of genetics. And this is um, one of the major defects in The Origin of Species. This is not a criticism of evolution. This is just a criticism of the book, The Origin of Species. So if, if Darwin had knowledge of genetics, he would have been able to solve um, the problems that he approached in the book um, in a way that was more accurate. Um, so he was uninformed in terms of knowledge of genetics. Now, of course, we can do evolutionary biology today with a knowledge of genetics, um, but since Darwin lacked that knowledge, he was uninformed, and of course, he couldn't help it um, because uh, everybody lacked that knowledge at that point. Two, you might say that the author is misinformed. There's a difference between being uninformed and being misinformed. To be uninformed is to uh, lack a bit of knowledge. To be misinformed is to believe that something false is true. So to say that an author is misinformed is to say that what he asserts um, is not the case or is contrary to fact. So as an example, it used to be believed that the earth is the center of the universe. Now we know this is misinformation. So any sort of, any sort of physics or um, uh, astronomy that is based on a model of the universe um, in, which the universe is, in which the earth is the center that will be um, a, a book that is misinformed. So you might also judge the soundness of an author's um, book by saying you are illogical. To say that an author is illogical is to say that he has committed a fallacy in reasoning. Committing a fallacy in reasoning is not necessarily to, uh, to say to um, be uninformed or to be misinformed. It's to, um, it, it, it's to use reason poorly. And there are two types of fallacy, uh, non sequiturs and in an inconsistency. So a non sequitur is where the conclusion uh, does not follow the premises. A non sequitur is where the conclusion does not follow the premises. Just, let me just give you a ridiculous example of a non sequitur. Um, the 
moon is round, therefore uh, Donald Trump is president. It doesn't follow from the moons being round that Donald Trump is president. After all, Donald Trump hasn't always been president, but the moon's been round for longer than America's been in existence, right? So I don't even need to go into detail on that. You can see that the conclusion doesn't follow. Then an inconsistency would be two things that the author has tried to say that are incompatible. So uh, logically incompatible. You can't. They can't both be true. And um, this is a grave error um, and undermines uh, the author's book, the, the author's solution to the problem. Both are. Both are. So here's an example of uh, being illogical. You have Machiavelli uh, in The Prince saying, the chief foundations of all states, new as well as old, are good laws. As there cannot be good laws where the state is not well armed, it follows that where they are armed, they have good laws. It doesn't follow. Okay, just because there cannot be good laws where the state is not well armed, it doesn't automatically follow that if a state is well armed, they will have good laws. Just think about it and you'll see that it doesn't follow. So there's an example in a very well-known work where um, an author's soundness, uh, an author is unsound uh, because the author is being illogical. Now this doesn't, you know, undermine the entire book, um, just um, anything relevant to this statement. Okay, so we've, deal we've dealt with soundness, now let's deal with completeness. Um, you might say that an author's work is incomplete. To say that an author's analysis is incomplete is to say that he has not solved all the problems he started with, uh, hence he didn't uh, achieve the purpose of the book, or that he has not made as good a use of his materials as possible, um, that he did not see all their implications and ramifications, or that he has failed to make, dis make, make distinctions that are relevant to his undertaking. Now note, you can't just say that a book is incomplete. You must specify the precise way in which the book is incomplete. Okay, so that brings us to the third stage of analytical reading. In the first stage of anal analytical reading, um, we gave rules for finding what a book is about. The second stage of anal analytical reading, we gave rules for interpreting a book's contents. With the third stage of analytical reading, we have rules for criticizing a book as a communication of knowledge. So those are the three ways um, to analy analytically read a book. You find out what it's about, you interpret it, and then you criticize it. Now criticizing it doesn't mean necessarily that you disagree with it. Um, being critical of it might mean that you are, um, uh, you, you know, that you are uh, uh, analyzing it in an in-depth way, even if you wholly agree with it. Okay, so here's the third stage of anal anal analytical reading, a summary. A, you have general maxims of intellectual etiquette. Rule 9, do not begin criticism until you have completed your outline and your interpretation of the book. Rule 10, do not disagree disputatiously or contentiously. Have a good attitude um, and check your emotions. Rule 11, demonstrate that you recognize the difference between knowledge in mere personal opinion by presenting good reasons for any critical judgment you make. You can't just uh, say, um, I think such and such, without, their, uh, without also defending why you think such and such. B, part B of the third stage of analytical reading, um, Adler gives special criteria for points of criticism. Rule 12, you can show wherein the author is uninformed. Rule 13, you can show wherein the author is misinformed. Rule 14, you can show wherein the author is illogical. Uh, rule 15, you can show wherein the author's analysis or account is incomplete. Or you might totally agree with the, the author in whole. Okay, so this third stage of analy analytical reading helps you answer the third and fourth of the four basic questions that you must ask of any book. Is it true? That deals with... Uh, um, uh, rules 12 and 13, and then what of it? 
All right, that completes our um, overview of chapters 1 through 11 of Adler's How to Read a Book.